What is going on everybody? It is 2023 and we're well overdue to show you my game room. It's been about a year and a half now and I cannot wait to show you what it's evolved into. It has changed a lot since June 2021 when the last one was uploaded. So without any further ado, let's freaking go. So we're gonna start with my never before seen outside of my door because there's really not much going on there. But you walk in and this is the first thing you see. We got my desk right there, boom, shelf display, and uh, other shelves. So yeah, that's gonna be the video. Thanks for watching, peace. We're gonna start right up where we normally do with that uh, Smashball Perler art. And moving to the right, we got this brand new uh, neon light. Well, neon looking, it's actually just an LED, but it looks really cool, you know, generic game controller, but that frames in the Mario Galaxy 2 logo of this poster that's been here for years now. Absolutely love this thing. Fills in that wall so nicely with that electrical box. There you go. Below that, we got my Disrupting the Game by Reggie Fisame. It's actually a really, really good book. I read that Last summer, highly recommend it. But my copy I bought from uh, Premier Collectibles, and uh, that's falling out. This isn't going super well. Hold up. But yeah, from Premier Collectibles, you could have Reggie Fizeme himself sign the book for you. It was a little bit extra, but it's freaking Reggie, so it's worth every penny. But yeah, right there. Thanks for the support. Signed by Reggie, disrupting the game. That is one of my favorite pieces. That thing is awesome. And then we got my Sonic Energy Drink, the Minecraft Amiibo, which got a GameStop on Sonic Frontiers Day. They look pretty nice, but nothing too crazy. Fake plant, whatever. Then we get into some really quality video game collection. You know, PS1, 2, some more 2, 3, OG Xbox, 360, a couple 1 games, even though I don't have that system. And then Genesis games, which I really want to start collecting for the Genesis this year said that in a tweet the other day. If you're not following me, at Jeremy M. Klinger, go do that. But yeah, I really want to start collecting for the Sega Genesis because I still don't have one yet. Crazy. Those games were just cheap. I found them, so why not? And then next to those, we got some movies, you know, who really cares? Some amazing Spider-Man. Down here, we got all the good Spider-Man movies on Blu-ray, one through three, and then two of the new ones. Not the most recent one, even though that one's fantastic. It's just too pricey right now and then we got some uh, ps1 games some extra dvds and that's about it for the first game shelf uh oh i forgot about the dreamcast stuff how could i forget about the dreamcast stuff we got samba de amigo which has some water damage when i bought it i just wanted the game working and then some some solid dreamcast titles you know the collection's small but i got everything that i really want aka sonic and samba de amigo but yeah that's the first game shelf and when you move to the right you will see the incredible desk setup, which isn't really that impressive right now. It's actually a lot cleaner than it used to be. I used to have just a pile of consoles here, which was a major, major fire hazard. Now I just keep it to what I play fairly often. If you didn't see, I got a new CRT from the incredible people at Torg Gaming. So thank you so much again to them for giving me that. Go like them on Facebook if you haven't. They're really awesome people. They gave me this because they had an extra. Thank you so much. But. Yeah, it works great, and it's really um, revived my love for retro gaming. I've been playing a lot of Dreamcast and Super Nintendo recently. That's that's why they're out there. But, dude, playing on an old-school CRT is so unmatched by any other way to play games. Like, sure, you can emulate them or, I don't know, buy virtual console games, but that is just not the same as playing on those. I, I, I know I'm sounding like, you know, a broken record here, but... It's just unmatched, guys. And to stick with the retro vibe, I got this really cool uh, faceplate for my Nintendo Switch, which looks like the Super Famicom. I got that from Extreme Rates, who is coincidentally today's video sponsor. They reached out to me, so they wanted to send me some, some stuff. I got some GameCube controller shells, which I'll go into in a separate video, but they also sent me that. It took like 10 minutes to get on there, and it looks freaking sick on there. My Switch has never looked any better and with the orange purple joy con like you can't beat that it looks great but yeah if you're interested in uh any kind of cover arts or shells for controllers go check out their website using my link in the description it would help support the channel it's an affiliate link but they got some really quality stuff and i would highly recommend them
But to move on from there, we got my power to the pixels, the computer, you know, we got the basic red keyboard and then the uh, red dragon mouse with the little color cycle. You know, whatever, the Yeti microphone, that's what I use in my videos in case you were wondering. Probably not, but whatever. But yeah, we got a basic uh, wallpaper engine thing running with the game room because that fits the vibe today. And then to go under the desk a little bit, we're going to skip the shelf with all my garbage and then we're going to get right to my PC which is an HP Pavilion, I want to say. Uh, it's not super great, but it does the job. It runs my editor and plays simple games, some VR stuff. I can't complain. It was cheap. And then we got my 360, which I use for DVDs and to play SpongeBob and Hit and Run, you know. Pens, pencils, Game Boy notepads, some index cards for keeping track of what needs to get accomplished. And then a meme pad that my brother made for me, Robert. You saw him in the vlogs too. You're supposed to like write the captions yourself and make some homemade memes, you know, but haven't used much of those, that's okay. But to go below the CRT, didn't show this yet, the top drawer has some controllers in it, the ones I use consistently because I have way too many. This thing was overflowing and I could not really do anything about that, but here's one of the controllers from Stream Rate. It's one of the color changing, depending on the, the lighting. You see it's blue and then it turns like a purple. It's really freaking nice. And I also got this gold one here, which is also very cool but uh yeah down there some important files you don't have to see those but that is the main part of my setup um you know again nothing spectacular just a couple game consoles but the rest of them are stored over here on this shelf which is super dark i gotta get a light hold on okay not the best lighting but it'll have to do i got the shelf over here where i just kind of stack my unplugged consoles to you know prevent a, a tragic burning down of this house but we got my GameCube, N64, PS2, recently acquired PlayStation 1, which had some Sharpie on it. I got it for a really cheap uh, price, but that came right off. Looks good as new. Below that, the OG Xbox, my Switch case for on the go. Got all my favorite games in there. And then moving right up, we got my extra controllers and accessories for things because that other drawer was getting way too crowded. And this uh, works pretty well to hold my extra stuff. And then we got a freaking Rossetti plush there, a Millennium Falcon, and stack of some Pokemon cards, and up here is where I keep all the cables for those systems. Uh, there's some extra clothes in there, and then, again, some more bins with uh, something my sister made for me, which is me holding up my trophy from the Madden 22 tournament. Again, GalaxyCon Columbus, check those vlogs out if you have not. But yeah, this hasn't really highlighted the collection, but it is where I keep a lot of my stuff. And what the hell, while we're over here, I'll show the back of my door. You know, we got some shoes some coats bags you know up here is my uh, pokemon sun and moon poster which i got on launch day that was the first game i ever pre-ordered and i got that from gamestop on uh, what was it november 18th 2016 now almost like six years that's crazy and then we got my hylian shield which i made in probably seventh grade because i was linked for halloween this is just cardboard with some duct tape blue paint you know it's not the best looking thing but looks pretty freaking cool and then when I took drawing, I decided to draw Reggie and <laughs> didn't come out very well, but I tried my best. Reggie, there he is. Uh, Spider-Man Among Us, of course, Historic Route 66. Then the curtain leads back this way, but now we need to get to the highlight of the collection, the big shelf. So these have actually changed the most since you last saw them. But again, the corner starts with the Mario plush, which is also a backpack that I got from California. He's holding a little uh, NES plush. Above that, the Nintendo Switch Sports Box. Very mid-game, but box looks cool up there. Then we got a Bowser Amiibo next to the Bowser chess piece. Atop the Mario Amiibo slash cereal. But this thing here is actually really cool. It's a 3D print of, uh, what's that level called? Starman Fort, that's it. Of, of Starman Fort, the cut level from Mario Galaxy. My brother got a 3D printer this past year, and I said that was the one thing I wanted. So for my birthday, he printed that out for me. That is... Really cool up there, next to Tanuki Mario, and the Yarn Yoshi, and the Propeller Mario. But then we go up the Nintendo New York water bottle, and we move to my Buffalo Bills section, which is grown a lot in the last year. You know, we got all three of the Josh's Jack cereal, with a bunch of sauces on top of them. And then we got my Josh Allen card, some Diggs uh, spices, and you know, whatnot. Bills pin up here, piece of a Josh Allen football from his rookie year. Then a jersey piece from uh, Sammy Watkins. And then an autograph from Greg Russo, who my brother met. I was working that day, but he got to meet him. Yo, what's up? Greg Russo here. Uh, shout out to Jeremy Krieger, the best game of these. That's awesome. And then 
The centerpiece right here is my GalaxyCon trophy, which you saw the picture of. Then my signed copy of Muppets Party Cruise, which uh, the voice of Kermit the Frog actually signed. I interviewed him about this game. If you want to check that out, uh, click the card. And then behind that, we got my signed copy of the B-Movie game by Michael Vick, which, if you're wondering why I did that, there's also a video for that. Um, if I can card that here, I will. And then down here is my first ever press pass of many more, because I really want to attend another event very soon. But this is the first one. I had such a blast there. Again, I keep talking about it, but it was so much fun. GalaxyCon Columbus, check out the vlogs. But we're going to keep going. We got my McDonald's toys from the Sonic 2 movie which I got one of every character. They look pretty cool there. In front of my, what is that called? The Brawler 64 controller, I think. The box for that. And then a weird Mario card game that I got from my parents with a Lego mushroom on top. And then another Sonic energy drink because I wanted to drink one, but I'm not an energy drink guy, so I haven't done that yet. But we also got the Pac-Man, Mega Man, some Samus figures from GameStop. And then my father's childhood Nintendo Entertainment System which I don't believe works anymore, but it looks really cool up there. We got Mario Bros. in there, and then Devil World, the Shigeru Miyamoto uh, pre-Mario game, which is really unique. I don't have a Famicom to play it, but I have tried it on an emulator, and it's fun. And then we got Mario and Bowser up there with, uh, you know, pixel art Luigi, the 3D All-Stars decals, and then the Pikmin little decals, uh, NES pin. We got my Majora's Mask Link, King K. Rule, Hero, Banjo-Kazooie, and Min Min. Then down here we got some miscellaneous stuff, the Starlink uh, ship, Master Chief 5 Below, can't beat that, Freelock Arena, a pixel art of Banjo-Kazooie, uh, some Pokemon tins, Goomba, Koopa, you know, some random toys I have from, you know, my childhood and whatnot. And then we got the brand new Starlink, which I paid like 10 bucks for, a brand new Star Fox Zero, which I paid like $10 for again, and then... Well, Star Fox Amiibo. And from there, we move right into the console display. We got the OG NES in the box with the Donkey Kong bongos up there. A cool 16-bit Pins Mechanical Cup. I toured that place in Cleveland. Again, another card if you want to check that out. But we got my brand new Game & Watch for Mario and Zelda because those are going to be good collector's items someday. I know it. Then we got some uh, handheld boxes, the Switch Lite and 2DS XL. Again, some Amiibos scattered around. Then the Wii U box, which isn't mine, it was my buddy's. It was just lying around his house. I asked if I could have it. He gave it to me, so thanks, dude. Then we got my Nintendo Switch box, which I have the Model 2 with the better battery life. And up there is Mario Sonic at the Olympic Games for Tokyo, because I thought it was going to be super rare, so I bought a sealed copy since those Olympics didn't happen. I don't think that game's going to go up in value much, but <laughs> it is what it is. Now we got my PS1 Classic, the DualSense box, my Quest 2 with the new Joy-Con that are on my Switch, those are awesome. And then the PS5, which I waited in line for on Thanksgiving of 2021. I was number seven in line of, I wanna say nine people, so I barely made it, but we got a PS5. It's not in here, it's out in the living room because everyone plays it, to be honest, my dad plays it more than I do. But I have it to create content with, of course. And then we move on, we got the bold and brash painting that my sister made for me. That thing is a cult classic, you know. I made her a perler version, she made me that. You'll love to see it. Then we got the SpongeBob and Patrick Battle for Bikini Bottom uh, statue things, which I couldn't pass up. And then the U2s, the Crash Bandicoot 4 series. And then some Funko Pops, Sonic Frontiers Steelbook, the Sonic GameCube controller, uh, Rick and Morty. <laughs> Funko Pops, the Jerry's next to him. You can't really see those anymore, but that's fine. Then some uh, Star Wars random things I have. This big rhino statue that I had to buy for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I just threw it up there. It looks kind of cool. You know, it fits the vibe. I lined up the Spider-Man movies on top of the Batman game with some random Dollar Tree figures. And then we got the little Sonic Frontiers launch day uh, plush. That thing is freaking sweet. And then you move right above my closet as soon as I adjust this light and you'll see these little five below sonic figures which i think really transition from the shelves to my closet quite well and then we have this little tiger electronics sonic 3 thing which i bought sealed for like 20 bucks because it looks freaking awesome up there i have no desire to ever open that but it looks really cool frames that in as a little sonic section then you move down with my mario blanket covering my closet but you move to the left here you see my oculus quest the sandy figure which goes with the spongebob and patrick 
you know, my keys and whatnot. And then my 50K YouTube play button, which you do not get a plaque when you hit 50K. My brother actually made that for me for Christmas because we make homemade gifts. That's why you saw the block with the Galaxy Con and some other stuff I've mentioned. But he made me a 50K play button because he knows how much I work to make this channel great. And he acknowledges that this was a really, really thoughtful gift. So thanks, man. And then we got my uh, Cleveland Skyline postcard because I took a trip to Cleveland earlier in the year before GalaxyCon and had a blast. And then we have these little Kirby Amiibo, a Wii U gamepad, some extra box Amiibo I have, the Krusty Krab spatula, and then moving all the way down, we found a chair at Goodwill. It was $10. I got that pillow from my grandparents for Christmas, and now we have a really, really nice seat for a player two to hang out with me. And then we moved to, you know, my pride and joy, the homemade game shelf, which again, I made a video about, click the card. Up top, we got my Samba de Amigo Maracas controller box, because I have no other room for it. It's kind of crushing the top of it, but it's all I can do for right now. I'm working on a video currently about the game, so stay tuned for that. That's going to be really cool. But moving down, we got my boxed Super Nintendo N64 games next to a little winged Kirby I got from New York City. Below that, we got my NES collection. Then the Super NES, King K. Rule, Donkey Kong Country, Rules. Then we got a little more Super Nintendo, my Banjo-Kazooie U2s next to my N64 games because I thought that made the most sense. Now these are alphabetized, again they don't have the N labels, but I put the more valuable ones in front because I like to flex like that. You know we got my Conkers, Paper Mario, and Kirby 64 because I actually really like that game, but these two are rare. And then we go to my Pride and Joy, the GameCube games because GameCube's my childhood, man. We got the little uh, Captain Falcon Amiibo to go with the last F-Zero game. And then we move down, we got some DS, 3DS, some extra consoles here, Game Boy. Behind that is a stack of, I don't know if you can see that, but a stack of Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games. I just kind of have to keep those behind there for now because I have no freaking room here anymore. Now we keep going, got some Wii games. I actually bought some really good titles the last year. Uh, Mario Party 9, Mario Kart Wii. I think Smash Brawl is a recent pickup too, but yeah, we got the Rosalina Amiibo because Mario Galaxy is elite. And then we go to Wii U, some more Wii U, Min Min and my Switch collection. I don't even own ARMS, but Min Min's a very good character in Smash Bros, so she's there guarding the Switch games. And then below that we have my Spider-Man figure, which goes with the, uh, the Rhino up there. Then my PS4 collection, quite a few games for that, haven't bought any in a long time. And then my little PS5 collection, which the system came bundled with Ratchet Clank, Spider-Man, and Ghost of Tsushima. I bought Sonic Frontiers launch day, that's the first game I bought for the system. But my library for PS5 is definitely lacking at the moment. That's fine, games are expensive, I don't want to spend that kind of money. Then at the bottom we have some uh, TV shows, I keep the movies over there, the television shows I have on DVD are mostly here, we got Family Guy, The Office, The Simpsons, some Spongebob, a little bit of Sonic Boom, some retro cartoons, and uh, that is most of my game shelf. Um, but you want to see how this place looks in the dark, you know, with some games going on, because that is what a game room's made for, right? So let me do that in one second. And here we have the place in the dark of night. This is like my favorite thing to do, is just to check out everything and how it looks with these blue lights. It, they do change colors, but blue I find to look the best with my collection. But you know, you know, everything's lit up all, all nice. And yeah, this is what it looks like on a typical uh, game night here in the Klinger Cribbo. Also, I can't believe I forgot to show this, but I have a signed Josh Allen jersey uh, right there. It's in the floor in the little corner here because I have no room to hang it up, which is very distasteful. I'm sorry, but I have no room for it anywhere. It's got to be there for now, but it's really cool to have. And yeah, I think that's everything. So with that said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please drop it a like. It helps the video a lot. Also, let me know down in the comments what your favorite part of this collection is because it's gotten pretty big. I know it's not the biggest one out there, but I'm really proud of it. I'm really happy with it. It brings me a ton of joy and thank you for finding it cool. So um, with all of that said, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Peace.